proteins are necessary for your body to function properly. Your body uses proteins to build and repair tissue, create hormones and enzymes, and many other things. The instructions to make different proteins comes from your DNA. But how does your body go from reading the DNA to forming proteins? There are a few steps involved. We'll go through these steps and then look at a couple example questions regarding protein synthesis. The first step of protein synthesis is transcription. A section of DNA is unzipped and mRNA nucleotides temporarily bond with the exposed DNA bases. Let's pause quick to understand what mRNA is. RNA is ribonucleic acid. It has a ribose sugar instead of a deoxyribose, like DNA has. RNA is a single helix, not double-stranded. And RNA does not have thymine like DNA does. Instead, it has uracil as a base and this pairs with adenine. There are some other differences between DNA and RNA, but these are the big ones. mRNA is a type of RNA called messenger RNA. There is another type of RNA we'll use in a bit called transfer RNA or tRNA. Okay, back to protein synthesis. Once the strand of mRNA is formed, it leaves the nucleus and finds a ribosome in the cytoplasm of the cell. The next process is called translation because the order of the mRNA bases are going to be translated into a protein. The mRNA bases are read in groups of three bases. Three bases are called a codon. In the cytoplasm, there are amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. The amino acids attach to a specific tRNA molecule. The tRNA carries the amino acid to the ribosome. The tRNA have what's called an anticodon of three bases, which temporarily bonds with the mRNA's codon. Remember the rules of base pairings. When the tRNA stops at a codon, it releases the amino acid. The tRNA then leaves to go pick up another amino acid in the cytoplasm. The amino acids dropped in the ribosome bind together, forming a polypeptide chain, which is a protein. The mRNA codons set the instructions for the order of amino acids to form different proteins. There are also start and stop codons on the mRNA, so the protein doesn't stretch on forever. Here is a chart showing what amino acids go with what mRNA codons. After learning this process, you can now be given a segment of DNA bases and determine the amino acids making up the protein that is formed. Let's walk through this type of question together. Here is our DNA segment. What would be the complementary DNA sequence? To do a complementary stand, remember A pairs with T and G with C. What is our mRNA sequence from the original DNA strand? So ignore the one we just made and go back to the original. Remember, with RNA, there is no T, so A pairs with U. Notice this mRNA strand will be similar to the complementary DNA we just did, just without the thymine. Next, what is our tRNA sequence? tRNA is complementary to mRNA. Since it's still RNA, make sure you still have uracil. 
how many amino acids will come from this segment? We'll break down the mRNA into sections of three bases, and there should be six. Now, name the amino acids. Always use the mRNA sequence with the chart, not the tRNA. tRNA has anticodons and will give you the wrong answer. So, our amino acids for this segment are leucine, arginine, glutamate, proline, alanine, and valine. You have now successfully created a protein from DNA.